Señoras y señores, muy buenos días. Vamos a dar inicio al acto de instalación de la reunión regional, las relaciones económicas América Latina y el Caribe y Unión Europea y la sexta cumbre regional de Madrid. Palabras del excelentísimo señor Aliodin Ismael, embajador de la República Cooperativa de Guyana y presidente del Consejo Latinoamericano. Thank you very much. Excellencies, Mr. Secretary General of the Association of Caribbean States, His Excellency Ambassador Antonio Cardoso, Head of the Delegation of the European Union in Venezuela, Ambassadors, Distinguished Guests, Members of Delegations, Ladies and Gentlemen. Well, first of all, I welcome all of you to this meeting. But most importantly, I wish to express my profound sympathy and solidarity to the government and people of Haiti over the tremendous loss of life and property and the severe deprivation of the entire population following the devastating earthquake last month. With Haiti in our minds, We meet over the next two days here at Salem to preview the upcoming sixth <coughs> summit of the European Union and Latin America and the Caribbean countries to be held in May in Madrid. Various regional and sub-regional groups, specialists and representatives of Latin American and European countries will participate in the, the discussion of this forum today and tomorrow, and will examine issues affecting the advance of economic and political relations between the two regional groupings. I am absolutely sure that the problems affecting Haiti will feature prominently in the upcoming summit. This meeting also presents an opportunity to reflect on the action plans of the last summit in Lima and to examine how much has been achieved since then. It will also enable Latin American and Caribbean nations to identify common areas of concern which can assist in projecting common regional positions at the Madrid summit. However, we have to be realistic in agreeing that each country in Latin America and the Caribbean has its own self-interest, and it may not be possible to develop common positions on some strategic issues. The last summit in Lima in May 2008 was of particular importance since it resulted in defining two major priorities of the bi-regional strategic partnership. These priorities were, one, poverty alleviation and the problems of inequality and inclusion, and two, sustainable development and issues affecting the environment, climate change, and energy. That summit also saw two positive results. These were, one, the decision to create working groups in sectoral subjects, and two, the adoption of action-oriented agendas on the two main priority areas. Without a doubt, the European Union, Latin America, and the Caribbean Summit, which sees the participation of more than 600, sorry, more than 60 countries, has a powerful international impact. The debate at the highest level identifies new development vistas for the participation of both regional groupings and allows for the adoption of fresh initiatives to deal with the challenges of mutual economic assistance, trade and investment. With regard to economic assistance, foreign direct investment from the European Union to Latin America and the Caribbean 
has proven to be of growing significance in the last two decades. On the other hand, bilateral trade between the two regions have suffered as a result of the international economic crisis. One of the results of the Lima summit was the decision to give renewed impetus to the process for building a strategic association between the two regions by actively moving ahead with the negotiations of partnership agreements between the European Union and the various sub-regional groups in Latin America and the Caribbean. Even before the Lima summit, negotiations had started on an economic partnership agreement between the European Union and CARI forum countries comprising CARICOM and the Dominican Republic. Negotiations were concluded in 2008 and the agreement was signed last year. This agreement provides for substantial liberalization of market access for both goods and services and replaces the non-reciprocal preferential trade agreement which existed previously under the Lomé and Cotonou conventions negotiated with the African Caribbean Pacific nations. The government of Guyana has expressed some reservations since it felt the agreement would create some vulnerabilities for its major sugar industry and the welfare of the sugar workers of the country, thus implying the agreement is not totally fair. The Guyana government felt then and still feels that the terms and conditions of trade with the European Union must be fair and just and express these views very clearly before and after it signed on to the agreement. In reality, Guyana is worse off now than before with the economic partnership agreement. The government is concerned over the European Union's slow pace of delivery of accompanying measures and its strict conditionalities are restricting the disbursement of timely support to the sugar producing countries of the Caribbean, whose economies are facing severe consequences arising from the 36% price cuts by the European Union on sugar. Significantly, the full price cut, which took effect this year, will result in an annual loss to Guyana of 34.1 million United States dollars. Actually, the sugar-producing countries of the Caribbean, which include Guyana, Barbados, Belize, Jamaica and the Dominican Republic have expressed their disappointment with the slow pace of disbursement of funds from the European Union, which are intended to help in buffering the economies of sugar producing countries from the fallout associated with the price cuts. The sugar producing countries want a trading regime with fair and stable prices and access to the secure and a predictable long-term market in the European Union, and this will surely be expressed at the Madrid Summit. The process to bring about other partnership agreements has been hindered by several factors, which include the international economic crisis that has affected trade dynamics, protectionist measures, internal differences within the sub-regions and the current stalemate of the WTO multilateral trade negotiations. This has especially affected negotiations towards agreements between the European Union and Mercosur and also with the Andean community and Central America. However, there is now some optimism that the European Union and Mercosur are getting closer to an association agreement which could be signed at the Madrid Summit, hopefully. As we look towards the Madrid Summit, 
we must keep in mind that the central topic will be the role of innovation and new technologies in the area of sustainable development. This topic is related on the one hand to problems involving environment conservation and on the other to the issue of social inclusion. Obviously, this involves capitalizing on the progress made in both priority areas, particularly the problems associated with the climate change and sustainable development. It also underlines the importance of civil society in Latin America and the Caribbean and the European Union in playing a stronger role in raising awareness of the bioregional relations and in improving their transparency and effectiveness. This can surely work to boost the strategic partnership and traditional goals such as social cohesion, regional integration, and development cooperation policy. Thank you very much for your attention.